Satellites orbiting around Earth are always prone to numerous cosmic threats, and presently SpaceX's Starlink mega constellation is in big trouble from such a threat. Forty SpaceX Starlink satellites have become useless and are on the verge of destruction. So what put SpaceX in trouble? We'll discuss it. Just a few days ago, SpaceX hit the mark of launching 2,000 Starlink satellites in orbit. They also have ambitious plans to launch around 12,000 satellites in years to come. Still, now, more or less, SpaceX's Starlink missions were successful. In the last Starlink mission, carried out on the 3rd of February, Thursday, had successfully delivered a batch of 49 version 1.5 Starlink satellites atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Not only the launch was successful, but also the Falcon 9 second stage had deployed the satellites into their projected orbit as usual. But though each satellite has achieved controlled flight in orbit, still the mission got a major threat from a geomagnetic storm which happened on the 4th of February, causing the SpaceX Starlink project to face an expensive blow. Geomagnetic storms are caused by the sun spewing out solar wind particles that eventually crash into Earth. The particles mess with the planet's magnetic field and disrupt satellites, increasing drag and messing with their orbits. As per SpaceX estimation, almost 40 of the total 49 Starlink satellites launched on the last Starlink mission will be destroyed due to this geomagnetic storm. In a blog post, SpaceX wrote, Unfortunately, the satellites deployed on Thursday were significantly impacted by a geomagnetic storm on Friday. These storms caused the atmosphere to warm and atmospheric density at our low deployment altitudes to increase. SpaceX also clearly states that launching in the low Earth orbit gives a good advantage, which is if any satellite does not pass initial system checkouts, it will quickly be deorbited by atmospheric drag. This feature helps them to maintain a sustainable space environment. With the help of onboard GPS instruments in Starlink satellites, SpaceX have found out that the recent geomagnetic storm caused atmospheric drag to increase up to 50% higher than during previous launches, preventing the deployed satellites from reaching their destined orbit around the Earth. For taking cover from the storm, the Starlink team commanded these satellites into a safe mode where they would fly edge-on to minimize drag. They also continued to work closely with the Space Force's 18th Space Control Squadron and LEO Labs to provide updates on the satellites based on ground radars. But a good thing is that these deorbiting satellites will be no threat to other satellites in orbit, as SpaceX has designed them in a way so that they will demise upon atmospheric re-entry, and no orbital debris will be created and no satellite parts hit the ground. This unique situation demonstrates the great lengths the Starlink team has gone to ensure the system is on the leading edge of on-orbit debris mitigation. In our following update, SpaceX has won launch contracts from Launcher Space to deliver space tugs in SpaceX rideshare missions. SpaceX's 2021 launch history was at a good pace. 2022 also seems to be going good for SpaceX progress. Recently, they've won another contract from a startup company named Launcher Space. Launcher Space, in their official Twitter page, says that Launcher signed a multi-launch agreement with SpaceX. Orbiter will fly on every 2023 SpaceX rideshare mission to SSO. According to the contract, SpaceX will have to launch three more Orbiter Space tugs for Launcher Space in orbit. Sources state that SpaceX may have at least one space tag 
in every dedicated rideshare mission, which are scheduled in between the last quarter, 2022, to the end of the next year. Launcher had earlier revealed about their orbiter spacecraft program in 2021. They've also announced then that they plan to debut the first vehicle on a SpaceX rideshare mission. Report says that debut may be carried out in SpaceX's Transporter 6 mission, which is scheduled for October 2022. Prior to that, SpaceX had Transporter 4 and 5 scheduled in the first half of the year. In recent years, SpaceX's SmallSat rideshare program provides one of the simplest ways to deliver multiple payloads to space at most affordable price tags. After carrying out a Starlink rideshare mission in 2020, they carried out dedicated transporter launches in January 2021. Till now, SpaceX has delivered over 320 satellites and payloads for their customers in all the rideshare missions they've carried out. Though rideshare missions are very advantageous options for launching payloads, still a single rocket delivering payloads on all orbits creates a complex situation. Falcon 9's upper stage needs to reignite several times to deliver payloads into orbit, and often the payloads launched on transporter missions ultimately end up in the same initial orbit. Now, to ease this complex situation, many companies are now developing competitive orbital transfer vehicles. According to sources, these orbital transfer vehicles, which are known as propulsive space tugs, could deliver any payload into a specific orbit of choice. And Launcher Space is such a company which develops these tugs, an orbiter being the most encouraging space tug project of them all. According to a report, the orbiter will use pressurized 3D printed thrusters for propelling in space. The thrusters will use ethane and nitrous oxide as propellant. These propellants were also kept in 3D printed tanks. Launcher has already started printing and hot fire testing of a number of thrusters. According to Launcher Space, orbiter space tugs will have a price tag of around $400,000. Orbiter has a carrying capacity of 400 kilograms, and it's estimated that a Falcon 9 launch with orbiter focusing to a dedicated orbit would cost a prospective customer almost $3.5 million which comes around less than $9,000 per kilogram. And for orbiter rideshare missions, Launcher is planning to charge between $8,000 and $25,000 per kilogram. So this sets a quite cheaper and competitive price tag. Now we'll discuss Lockheed Martin's selection by NASA to develop spacecrafts for Mars sample return missions. On the 7th of February, Monday, NASA announced that they've selected Lockheed Martin for developing the Mars Ascent Vehicle, MAV, for their Mars sample return missions. According to sources, MAV is a small rocket that will launch the crewed Martian samples back toward Earth for analysis and research work. Thomas Zerbukin, the Associate Administrator for Science at NASA headquarters, stated, committing to the Mars Ascent Vehicle represents an early and concrete step to hammer out the details of this ambitious project, not just to land on Mars, but to take off from it. We are nearing the end of the conceptual phase for this Mars sample return mission, and the pieces are coming together to bring home the first samples from another planet. Once on Earth, they can be studied by state-of-the-art tools too complex to transport into space. Another big shot, Bill Nelson, who's the administrator at NASA, said, This groundbreaking endeavor is destined to inspire the world when the first robotic round-trip mission retrieves a sample from another planet, a significant step that will ultimately help send the first astronauts to Mars. America's investment in our Mars sample return program will fulfill a top-priority planetary science goal and demonstrate our commitment to global partnerships ensuring NASA remains a leader in exploration and discovery. This Mars Sample Return mission is a partnership mission of NASA and the European Space Agency. As per reports, both agencies are progressing well with the project. NASA's Perseverance rover, which landed on the Red Planet in early 2021, sets an example for this progression. 
Already, the rover has gathered a good number of samples and will do the same in the future. Sources state that NASA's recently revealed Mars Ascent Vehicle contract may figure up to a value of $194 million. Work for the MAV contract will commence on the 25th of February and will last for the next six years. In the six years timeline, Lockheed Martin will develop several MAV spacecrafts for multiple ground tests and also flight units for practical uses in the future. In the context of partnership between NASA and ESA for the Mars Sample Return Mission, they'll launch two more missions in the middle of this decade. NASA will launch their Sample Retrieval Lander mission, followed by the launch of ESA's Earth Return Orbiter mission. The Sample Retrieval Lander mission will send an ESA fetch rover and the MAV to the Martian surface. Upon reaching the Martian surface, the fetch rover will gather the samples which Perseverance has collected or found out and then transfer it to the MAV. In the next step, the MAV will launch off the Martian surface and will send the samples in an orbit around Mars. In the last step, Earth Return Orbiter will get hold of the samples from the orbit and will bring it back to the Earth. NASA officials stated that after getting the samples, they'll study it to find out any ancient signs of Martian life or the nature of evolution on the red planet. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.